Hi there, Lindy Goodall with another little hatch scratching. As you begin to create larger and larger designs, managing the object sequence can become cumbersome, especially if you need to add an element somewhere in the middle of your design. I often find that I may have to add a travel run here and there to eliminate an unnecessary trim after I get done with the design, and usually it's somewhere in the middle of the design. Hatch doesn't offer the ability to, say, select an object and then do paste in front or paste behind, a feature that I use in other programs. And also, the objects in the resequence bar aren't numbered. So it's hard to find that's the object that I want to paste in front of, because there's no indication I would have to recognize it by shape or maybe position. So to make the techniques I'm going to demonstrate in this video easier to follow, we're just going to work with this simple Valentine's Day design. Here's what it looks like in True View, and it's just a simple design here. I'm going to turn True View off. I could have just pressed T. Now, I like to work without True View on because I want to see what's going on. I want to see the underlay. I want to see where there might be any trims. See this little triangle here? This is a trim. I don't want to see any within this design because it's a single color design. It's connected from end to end, or it should be. And I don't want it to stop and trim where it's not needed. Let's cover the basics of moving elements on the resequence bar, just in case you're brand new. And probably the most common way is to just click one and drag it. So you can just drag it up. You can drag it down. You can drag it way down. I'm going to do Control Z, get it back. And normally when I'm doing a drag type of thing like that, I will only do it within a viewable area. I don't want to have to drag for multiple screen worth. Now, this one doesn't have a lot of objects. So if we just start at the top and I just click on the scroll bar here, three clicks will get me to the bottom. So this is not a really long design. So it might not be so hard to get something moved to the middle. Now I can also do things like take that first object, move it all the way to the bottom. I can move it all the way back to the top. I can move it down and I can move it up by clicking the single arrow. So this, these move it up or down one slot at a time and these will move it all the way to the bottom. So hopefully I got it back in the right spot. So what if you need to add something near the middle. That's where things get tricky. So let's kind of move down to the middle and we'll find a good place to do something. How about this one? So let's say that I've digitized this object and um, I've done these little guys and I didn't do this one. So I'm just going to do Control X. And I just forgot to do that or somehow I deleted it accidentally or didn't get there. And you can see a little dotted line. And if you were to look closely, there's a little triangle right there that tells me there's a trim. So I need to do something. Maybe I could just do the J to do closest joins, but probably not because here's the next object and it's right there. This object ends here and then the next object is there. So I need to get there. And what I want to do is travel under this satin stitch and get there. So whenever you add a new object, it always goes at the end of the list. Then you'll have to move it up to where it's supposed to be. So one trick I like is I will take this object and I'll just hide it. Hide selected. And then we'll paste. <laughs> Pretend I digitize that. And there it is at the end. So now I have to move it to where it's the right spot. So I'm going to drag. And I'm going to drag some more. And I'm going to drag some more. And see, I can see that shaded one. That means it's hidden. And I can just put that object right there. And when I turn this back on and hide all, there is my design. And it's all in the proper sequence. Now, if this was a really long design and I had to scroll multiple, multiple times, you would get pretty tedious. So there's another way I like to move things. And this involves a little creative work here. So we're going to take this object and we're going to color it blue. 
because once again I know that's where I need to put my object and I'm going to control X again and control V and that pasted at the end so I've redigitized my object let's just pretend here and I'm going to change that to a different color we'll make it say green and okay so what's with the color thing Wow if you go over here click the colors tab you can see I have red blue that's that object red that's the rest of my design and there's my new piece and guess all what I have to do I just do that and now it's in the right order I'll hold down the control key, select that other color swatch, click on my color bar, get them all back to red. There's my design. Now, wasn't that much faster than scrolling? Now, yes, this is a single color design, so it was real easy to see what I was doing, but I do that in multicolor designs. I do that, I did that in this design. So, this is a big design. You can see that it's got 51,000 stitches and it has a lot of objects. So, you know, I'll be clicking away, dragging a long time if I have to move something up to the middle. But if I use the color tab, then all I have to do is put in some weird funky color. Maybe I need to make that, you know, I don't know, purple. Then I know where that object starts and I can move or something before or after it. So I'll undo that. And there you have it. These are some tricks for managing object order on the resequence bar that I've figured out and I'm sharing them with you and hope you found them useful. Thanks for watching and please like, comment, and subscribe and come back again. Thanks!